Hi guys and welcome to another video. So this video continues in the Unraid 6.9 series and today we're going to be looking at transferring data. We're going to be looking at transferring data to, from and inside an Unraid server. So if that sounds interesting then let's get started. So you finally finished building your Unraid server. So now's the time we need to be thinking about the easiest, quickest and the best ways to transfer data to, from and inside and around the server. Now when I first started making this video, I thought it was just going to be one video about moving data around on Unraid. But by the time I'd finished the video, I saw it was almost an hour long and now no one wants to watch an hour long video, so I decided to re-edit it and cut it into five parts. So now because this small little mini-series is all finished, I'm going to be uploading all of the parts over this weekend. Now the last video I uploaded was in my Unraid 6.9 series. And that video took us to the point showing us how to set up the shares as efficiently as possible on a new server. So it makes sense for this video to move on forwards and look at multiple different ways which we can move data to the server and also once we've got data on the server, different ways we can move it around. But this video isn't just for people who have recently set up an Unraid server. There are techniques in this video, even if you've been using Unraid for a while, you might find useful to use. But if you are a new Unraid user and you've just finished building your first Unraid server, then it's not going to have any data on it at all. But the chances are, is you've got another NAS, computer or just a hard drive you need to transfer the data from onto the new server. And obviously we want to use the best way to do this, we want it to be quick and easy, no messing around. So let's go onto the server in the last video which we were setting up and make a start. So like I said there's no data on this server, yes we have set up the shares, but there's nothing on them at all. So in these videos this weekend, we're going to be looking at four different ways to move and transfer files on our Unraid server. We're going to be looking at a Docker container called Crusader, and Crusader will let us copy and move files from within a web GUI. We'll be looking at a method what I call using a root share. Using a root share will let us copy and move files straight from our PC using its own file manager, for example Finder on the Mac or on Windows 10 Windows File Explorer. We'll be looking at a command line tool that's built into Unraid called rsync. And finally another command line tool, this one having a built-in GUI quite similar to Crusader which is also built into Unraid called Midnight Commander. Now all of these tools have their own pros and cons and when we look at them I'll try and point out what those are. But a lot of the time it will just come down to your personal choice and what works best for you. So obviously someone who's never used command line before, they might feel a bit uncomfortable with it and so prefer to use something like Crusader or the root share method. But before we go and look at anything at all, I think it's really important we have a quick look at how the Unraid file system works because it will make things much easier to understand if you're familiar with that. But actually before we start, there's two plugins that we should check that are installed. So on the apps tab, just type in unassigned and you should have unassigned devices installed as well as the unassigned devices plus add-on. The plus add-on gives us file support for HFS and XFAT so it's important that we have this enabled. So on the Unraid operating system all of the files are under the location or what's called the mount point forward slash MNT. For example if I go and look on disk 1 here clicking this icon allows me to view the files which are on disk 1 and here we can see the location. It's forward slash MNT forward slash disk1. So here I can see the contents of disk1 and the location of the files. And again I can see the same for disk2 and disk3 and also the cache drives. You can see here the location of this cache drive is forward slash MNT forward slash cache underscore NVMe. So the location of all physical disks on Unraid is in forward slash MNT and then the name of the disk. So that's the disks, now let's look at the location of the shares. So obviously all of these shares are spread across the disks. And if I click on here where it says app data and click on to view, it will show me the location. So this share is forward slash MNT forward slash user forward slash app data. 
So this first part here, the forward slash MNT forward slash user, this is the location where all of the shares are. So every single share on Unraid will be under forward slash MNT forward slash user. So if I go to my movie share here, this share is in the same location, as is my TV show share as well. So all Unraid shares can be found under forward slash MNT forward slash user forward slash then the name of the share. OK, so that's the location of the Unraid disks and the Unraid shares. But how about when we plug an external hard drive in as an unassigned disk, where's the location that Unraid keeps that? So to answer that, I'm going to plug an external USB hard drive in as an unassigned disk. OK, so there it is. So I'm going to click on to mount to mount the drive. And now if I click on this cross here and look inside the drive, we can see the location here is forward slash MNT forward slash disks, as in disks plural, and then the name of the drive. So on Unraid, all of the unassigned disks whether it's a USB external hard drive, an extra SATA disk, a USB flash drive, or even an SD card, it'll be in the location forward slash MNT forward slash disks, followed by the name of the drive. Now the unassigned devices plugin not only allows you to connect external disks, but it also allows you to connect remote SMB or NFS shares. So let's connect a remote share now and then we can see the location where Unraid mounts that share. So I'm going to choose the Windows icon here for an SMB share. And I'm going to search for a server. Now here where it says choose server. Now just because it says choose server, this doesn't actually mean it has to be a real server. It could just be a Windows PC with an SMB share. And if the share you want to connect to is password protected, you need to put in the username and password here. And if the share is on a domain, you can put the domain in here. Mine isn't. So now I'm going to click load shares and this is actually another Unraid server so I'm going to choose the share here app data. So I've connected to the app data share on another server and I'm going to click onto mount here and I click onto the name of the share here and we can see the location as is everything in Unraid forward slash MNT but then it's forward slash remotes and then the name of the remote share. So that's the basic structure of the Unraid file system for disks, shares and unassigned devices. But just to recap, let's open the terminal window and I'm going to type ls to list out the files forward slash mnt and enter. So in the folder mnt we can see all the unraid disks, shares and remotes. Here are the cache pools, cache nvme, cache protected, cache ssd and the array disks, disk 1, 2 and 3. Next we've got disks plural which is all the unassigned disks connected to the server. Then remotes, all the connected remote shares. And then user here, this is all of the Unraid shares made up of the content of all of the array disks and all of the cache pools. Now next to this folder we can see here where it says user zero. So you may be wondering just what's the difference between user and user zero. Well user zero is also all of the shares, but only made up of what's on the array disks and not including the data that's on the cache pools. So I'm going to say you should ignore user 0, all of your shares, the complete shares in the folder user. And this last folder here, VMs NVMe, well that's my last cache drive. OK, so that's enough talk about how Unraid structures its data. So now let's talk about some of the kind of practical implications when moving data around. So you might be thinking, well I can copy all of my data onto my new Unraid server just using my PC in the network, yeah? I can just browse the network and find the server, open the share I want to copy the data to and just copy and paste across to that, yeah? So the speed I'm transferring the data to the server, to this share, is based on two factors. One is the type of share that it is, and if you saw my last video when I set up my movie share, you'll know that this share is not cache enabled. So what that means is the writes are slower than they would be to a cache enabled share, because there's two writes happening one to the parity disk and one to the data disk and both of these are mechanical drives. And the second thing that's going to affect the speed is obviously the network. Transferring files over the network will be affected by the network speed. I'm transferring through a LAN cable, but transferring by Wi-Fi in most cases will probably be slower. So when just transferring a few files, this isn't really a problem. I started transferring 7 gigs of data 
and it's just going to take a couple of minutes to go across. But what we need to think about is what happens when we transfer really large amounts of data across. Not just a few gigs, but maybe a few terabytes of data. Well, this is going to take a long time. And also it's possible during the transfer there might be an error, like the connection might drop, and halfway through transferring your data, the copy's just going to stop and you're not going to know how much data you've copied across and how much you haven't. Also, think of a situation where you might have an existing NAS, and you want to transfer the data from that to the new Unraid server. And you've got your laptop. Now normally you log into the NAS with your laptop and transfer files to and from. So you're thinking, well, I can log into the NAS on the laptop and transfer the data to the new server. Now yeah, okay, this would actually work, but it's certainly not the best way to do it. Because remember, the data isn't going straight from the NAS to the Unraid server. It's going across via the network to the laptop first and kind of stopping off there, and then onto the Unraid server. So it's kind of like when you get a flight somewhere and it's not a direct flight, and you've got a stopover somewhere else. The direct route is always the more efficient and fastest way. And in fact, we can also have a similar situation when using our desktop PC or laptop when we want to move data from one share to another. So say we've got two map network drives on our Windows PC to two separate shares on the Unraid server. And you've decided you want to move a file from one share to another. Now again, it's not a direct route. It's going via the laptop and then back to the server to the other share. So not as fast as it would be if it just physically moved from one share to the other. But all of these problems are possible for us to overcome them. And that's what we're going to be looking at next. So the quickest way we can transfer our data to the Unraid server is not via the network, but if possible, by physically connecting the hard drive to the Unraid server. And this can be plugging the hard drive directly into a SATA port, or you can use a USB adapter SATA to USB to get the same job done. I really like these dual Inertec ones for doing this. They're also a hard drive cloner as well. I'll leave an Amazon link in the description in case you want to buy one. The link is an affiliate link, but it won't cost you any more to buy it through my link. It just means that Uncle Jeff will give me a few pennies for recommending it to you. Now I know it's not always possible to connect the hard drive directly to the Unraid server. You might not want to open your PC or laptop and take out the drive. You may have another NAS where the data is raided, so taking out an individual disk wouldn't do any good anyway. But don't worry, we will be looking at the best way to transfer the data from these devices across the network. But for now, let's move on and look at the first method of copying data using the Docker container Crusader. But now as this video is going to be in parts, then I'm sorry, you're going to have to wait to the next video for us to look at Crusader. But don't worry, you're not going to have to wait very long, because all of these videos are going to be uploaded over this weekend. But for now, if you like this video, then please hit the like button, and if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe. And to all of my patrons and supporters who are watching, thank you so much guys for all of your support, I really appreciate it. And if anyone watching would like to join those great bunch of people and help support the channel, then please see the links in the description below. Anyway guys, it's time for me to go now, but whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good, and I'll catch you in the next video.